I'm wearing white today in honor of Chick-fil-A changing their official color from red to white. Did you hear that? They changed their colors for what they're known for from being red to being the surrender flag. Just as I got red status on my app, Chick-fil-A goes and changes their colors and they're surrendering. They're surrendering to the culture warriors, to the social justice warriors. We're going to get into that and so much more today. Welcome to How to Build a Tent. My name is Matt Williams. Thank you for watching, sharing the show, listening to the show, tagging a friend, making a recommendation, supporting us by becoming a member. You can go over to fightlaughfeast.com, put in HTBT in the memo field, and you will get this mug. It's a beautiful 15-ounce mug. You'll get tons of other great po- content. We're, we're putting out content HTBT. We have our book club. We have shows that we're doing with other members of the network. It's just a really great time, and there's a, a tons of other stuff that we don't do too, but most of all, you'll be coming alongside of us as we are proclaiming the Lordship of Jesus in every area of life, and we are not raising that surrender flag. We are not backing down and being intimidated by culture like we're seeing in so many other places in the world. So will you join us and join the fight and help support us and becoming a member on the Fight, Laugh, Feast Network is just one of the ways that you can do that. And before we get into the show and what I want to talk about, I just wanted to say I was walking down the street the other day and just thinking about the honor and the privilege that we get, not just me, not just us on the network, but us Christians, the honor and the privilege that we all get to fight, to be on the Lord's side, to be used by God, to love people, to serve people, to proclaim the good news. It's an honor. It's a privilege. Now, we go through things that are hard. We go through times that are tough. And it's not always easy, but it's always an honor and a privilege. And we rest on the everlasting, the strength, the provider, the Jehovah, Jireh, the one who knows all. We rest on him. And we don't have to stress about these things. We don't have to stress about the hard times. We don't have to stress about the adversity that is coming our way. We don't have to stress about the enemy and what he looks like. We don't even need to focus on that. If we are just focused on the one who has called us, we can just sit back and enjoy the honor and the privilege. And I just want to say that it is truly an honor and privilege. And I've been really feeling that this last week, walking in the joy of the Lord, that no matter what battle that God brings us into, he wins in the end. He always wins. And that means that we don't have to worry about anything else because in the end he wins and he has bought us and he has redeemed us. Amen. And the other thing I want to just encourage you with, and I was enjoying my Sabbath and the more I take advantage of the Sabbath, I know I am not the typical reformed guy. I take my Sabbath on Saturdays and I do celebrate the Lord's day on Sundays as well. So I'm doing a twofer. I'm taking from both sides. I'm taking from my Jewish roots and enjoying the Sabbath on the seventh day and using his rest. And then I enjoy the Lord's day as well. And I look at that as a way to serve and give back and to dig in and benefit and bless my church community and the family around me. But I have, so I have my rest day and I have my work day, but it's still a joyous work day. It's not like my, you know, my financial stuff work day, but like my work, how am I going to hurt work and benefit the body of Christ? And anyways, that's neither here nor there. But I was just using my Saturday, resting, and just sitting with my family and using it to recharge me. That is to remind me why I'm working at all this stuff. It's because they're my number one ministry. My family is my ministry. My wife, my children, and just enjoying the blessing that they are. And this world tries to rob us of that blessing so much. Oh, you don't want to be married. You don't want that ball and chain Kids, oh my gosh, they take up all your time. My family is like one of the biggest joys of my life besides God. And it can recharge you. And I've just left, I left that Saturday feeling energized, rejuvenated, and ready to go. 
And I just, man, it's another a blessing that we have. If you want to reach out to me, I didn't say this, but you can find me, Matt, howtobuildatent.com. You can find me on the social media sites, How to Build a Tent. We have Reform Jellicle. We have you know, the network. We have all that stuff. You can reach out to me. I'd love to hear from you. Any questions, comments? We are video. We are using video now on our podcast iTunes feed, which is kind of a cool feature I've discovered. So you can check that out. I've had one person say that they've had issues with downloading. So if you have any issues, let me know. Otherwise, I'm just looking at the numbers to see how the show does with video compared to audio. And it looks like it's positive. It looks like we've actually got a bump from using video, which is cool. I love when these new technologies come out. You want to be on the cutting edge. You want to be getting experience. You want to be the innovator who is being on that front line. So, you know, the podcast app just rolls out video. You want to get on video because you want to be on the cutting edge of that stuff. Speaking of cutting edge, and this is more of like cringeworthy cutting. (laughs) I was going through YouTube and I get a lot of the Jimmy Kimmel clips and the Jimmy Fallon clips. I think they're funny. I know Jimmy Kimmel is a, you know... Uh, a soppy liberal, as AD would probably call him. Uh, but uh, one of the clips I saw was Carrie Underwood pranks where she was singing to customers that were coming into a boot barn or some kind of boot store. And it was so awkward. I'm going to put the link in the notes below Skillshare, our sponsor, for you to look at and see. Watch the video after you go and click on Skillshare, of course, to help support a show is another way. But... The, if you watch the video, it's like a few minute clip and she's singing and, you know, she has a great voice and she's actually really good. If 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 this wasn't like a bunch of cuts and edits and she was actually just freestyling and making up words to her songs based on the answers and what they were doing and the people that were in the shop, she's really talented. It was really good. But the one thing she looked so awkward when she came out and was greeting these strangers which I know like you are this attractive woman and like some of them were guys. It's like, what do you do? A high five or just like, it's, it was so, uh, anyways, you go check it out and you, and you can see what I mean. But I want to just say this is these personalities, a big part of who they are is their brand image. And if you are not going to be comfortable in front of people, you better make sure that you protect that. And that is a good reminder for all of us with our brand, with our company brand and our individual brand is you need to protect that. And, if you don't have a strength, don't put that on blast and on like Jimmy Kimmel. Don't put it out for the customers to see. Try to emphasize the strengths of your brand, of your personality, of yourself. If I wasn't a person that could be comfortable in front of the camera, I shouldn't be in front of a camera. If I'm not a person that could at least be in front of a mic, I definitely shouldn't be doing a podcast, right? So make sure that you are playing to your strengths and don't don't be as awkward as Gary looked. I'm going to tell you, like the music part is great. And then you see her go out and try to meet these people. And it's super awkward. Oh, my goodness. Anyways, check that out and you will not be disappointed. Another uh, article that I was reading was and it was actually pretty good, honestly. And I just wanted to bring this up because I hope I'm not doing this to you guys, too. It's like pushing people to be entrepreneurs is a disservice. And the the idea was if you are pushing young people, young um, young adults is the word I was looking for. If you are pushing young adults to just go be entrepreneurs and skip work experience and skip going through the corporate ladder and working for somebody, you're doing them a disservice because when you are getting hired and you work for somebody, you develop skills and you need skills. And then when you hire people in positions that are not entry level positions, you look for people to have these skills already because they're important because you need these soft skills and hard skills. That is, you need to know how to work with people, how to write an email, how to converse with somebody, how to talk about an issue, how to problem solve, how to use Excel. You need to learn these things. And if you don't know them, If we're just saying, go be an entrepreneur, and then he uses Facebook, go be like Zuckerberg, and go be like Bill Gates, and just voila, it'll be magic. And he goes on and talks about how entrepreneurship's like this French word, entrepreneurship, or however he was saying it in his head because it was an article, it wasn't him talking. And we like romanticize it, but if you don't have the skills that it would take to get hired in like a higher level position then you're not going to cut it as an entrepreneur. And he makes this great point that a majority of entrepreneurs that are young fail 
because they don't have skills. And so I want to not discourage you and say, don't become an entrepreneur or don't try a side hustle. Don't go out and try to start a business, especially if you're young. But one, understand that you have to have skills. You have to be have some experience either from mentorship or partnerships or some other way where you are going to get these life lessons that have been that need to be learned to help you run a business because running a business is really really hard and it takes a lot of work and it's okay to fail like if you're young look to start a business look to start a side hustle if that's what you are looking to do and you feel that's where you're being called and do it in a way where if you fail you're not going to be devastated financially emotionally or whatever but look at it as a learning opportunity and spend as little about a little amount of money as possible and that's why I liked I talked about a few shows ago about the the opportunity to just sell shirts and have like Amazon be the one who manufactures them and ships them out for you and just takes a percentage there's no overhead to it and so if you fail then it is a low risk so I just want you to be aware of that and I don't want you to think that oh it's just easy I I don't think I've done that but I just want to make it clear that you know side hustles entrepreneurship investing finance these are all difficult things and it takes skills and you need to develop them. It could be a great opportunity to do it. It can be a great facilitator of learning and developing skills a lot more than college education can. But let's not just go in naively thinking that entrepreneurship is going to be this fun, easy, you know, summer vacation. No, it's going to be blood, sweat and tears in a lot of respects. Talk to any entrepreneur about that. All right, so now we're going to get into the whole Chick-fil-A thing. But before we do, we need to talk about our sponsor who is so great to come and want to help support us. So think about coming and you know signing up for the two-month free trial that Skillshare has. Talking about the skills of an entrepreneur and what you need, those soft skills and hard skills. Well, Skillshare offers you on-demand classes learning at your own pace with other classmates where you can learn some skills that you think you need to do whatever you want to do. Maybe it's to learn Excel or to be a graphic designer. Maybe you want to learn how to communicate better. They have tens of thousands of courses for you to learn on demand. They're just so great. Like I love the storytelling one, storytelling class. I, I love that because as a leader, you need to be able to tell stories effectively. If you go over right now, you can join the millions of students that are already learning on Skillshare. Get two months free. Two months free. If you go over to Skillshare.com slash HDBT, I said backslash before my wife's like, no, it's forward slash. So just say slash. Okay. So it's Skillshare.com slash HDBT. Skillshare.com slash HDBT. The link's in the show notes right next to that Carrie Underwood clip. If you click on there, you will get two months for free. Go over there, support them as they're supporting our show. All right. So you have probably already heard of the Chick-fil-A drama. They are throwing up the white flag. And what is happening is they have a charity that has been giving to organizations like the Salvation Army and other Christian organizations that surprise, surprise, they believe in the Bible and they are anti the alphabet. And the alphabet lobbyists, you know, the LGBTQ, as um, David Chappelle calls them, don't like Chick-fil-A. They got run out of England recently. They tried to get run out of New York. I think they got kicked out of like an airport in Texas. And they decided that they're going to restructure their donations and they're not going to give to these companies anymore. Now, they had a commitment to 2018 to these these foundations to give to them and they they went past that and they were still giving but now they're restructuring and some people have been giving them the benefit out like let's wait and see did i say benefit of the now i meant benefit of the town <laughs> uh the, some people are saying like you know we just need to wait and see how this is going to play out what's really the truth of this but i want to h- give you some clips some quotes from chick-fil-a from the daily wire And this is some of the quotes. As we go into the new markets, we need to be clear about who we are. And this is in the context of taking money from giving them to these Christian organizations that are, you know, biblically based and going to giving them to education and some other, you know, non-controversial quote unquote charities. 
As Chick-fil-A expands globally and into more liberal parts of the U.S., Chick- the Chick-fil-A chain's plans to change which charities it donates after years of bad press and protests from the LGBT community. That's a quote from the author, not from Chick-fil-A itself. And then there's this quote where the Chick-fil-A representative says, there's no question we know what. As we go into new markets, we need to be clear about who we are. So this is why I'm not giving them a pass and saying, let's wait and see. Because this is under the guise of we need to be clear of who we are. And so we're going to stop donating to these charities that are supporting biblical principles. And the truth is that as a Christian organization, we need to be doing more than just not caving in like Chick-fil-A is doing. They're putting on those white shirts. They're changing their red into white. They're no longer going to be known for their red signs and red logos. They are known for their white surrender flags. And that's sad, and it's discouraging. It's discouraging to see a company that has stand, stood for so long on biblical values that has been supported by all of us. Like Those boycotts were met by increased revenues from us who have been supporting them, and we see them starting to realign and not fight the way that they fought before in the past. And that's discouraging. It's discouraging for all of us who have supported them for so long. But the truth is, is even if they stood, it's not enough. We need Christian organizations like Chick-fil-A to not just stand firm, but to advance. What we need is Chick-fil-A to not just restructure, but to double down. Not just Chick-fil-A, all of us, all of us Christian organizations. When we're getting pressured about the charities that we support that are biblically based, that are standing up for what God values, when we're standing up for life, when we're standing up for purity, holiness, the values, the virtues of our God, who we represent, we need to double down. That's the only way we're going to win. The Bible says the gates of hell will not prosper. The gates, not the siege weapons, not the trebuchets, not the battering rams. Marcus Pittman was playing um, uh, one of those video games that I used to love all the time. I forgot even what it's called right now because I haven't played video games forever. But that's what made me think of all those siege weapons. <laughs> all jokes aside, though, we need to be attacking. We're playing defense or we're surrendering or we're retreating. Sometimes we're not even playing defense. When are we going to start going on attack? That's the only way you win a victory is if you attack. You don't just sit out the enemy. You have to respond. And we can't even get that right. I don't even know why I'm surprised. I'm arguing with pastors in our church about obeying the Bible. Why do we expect a Christian organization to have a backbone against the world? If our pastors and our spiritual leaders in church can't even agree that we should follow the word of God. And if this leaves you a little down, I just want you to take hope in this. That Christmas is almost here where we celebrate Jesus, who even when it looked like he was defeated, nailed to a cross, buried in a tomb, that he rose again and conquered death. He conquered sin. He redeemed our lives and he won. He wins. In the end, he wins. And that's all that matters. So when we see these discouraging things, when we see companies not doing what they're supposed to, when we see pastors that are bringing in idolatry into their lives, bringing sin into their lives that are disqualified, we need to pray. We need to repent. We need to be praying for forgiveness, for God's mercy and grace. But we can do it with the peace that we know that Jesus wins. Let's go out and proclaim that message. We'll talk to you tomorrow. God bless.